So, let's jump to the future. Uh, to 2020. Uh, the first thing which comes to convenience actually is, like what if it was possible one day to walk up to an ATM-like machine, to be able to put your finger in or to enter your symptoms and be able to receive all the things that you need to get out of it, whether it's like the prescription for your medication or advice on how to change your habits. Uh, yeah, just like how uh, ATM, you know, branches have ATMs outside, yeah. this kind of model would be an interesting one um, to see. Yeah, and feel free to stop me anytime if you've ever seen any of these examples, or if you're working on some of these examples, or if you think some of these examples are just off the wall. We um, piloted something like this at UCSF. Oh, they did? In nice. the emergency room, um, and it's for uncomplicated acute illness. Yeah. So I think they start off with a urinary tract infection. Uh -huh. Basically, you answer a couple of questions. Yeah. It's in two different languages, English and Spanish right awesome. now. Um, and so, you know, you can capture the patient's yeah. complaints in their own native language. And um, if basically the algorithm says you have a UTI, yeah. <laughs> like you don't not need to come to the emergency room, yeah. your insides are not exploding. Like, yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's, di it's diverting traffic yeah. from the it's emergency room, right? Because it's yeah. like an ATM, you know, it's like I, I recall like maybe 10 years ago when a lot of bank, you know, banks would be, you'd go to you know, deposit your check and they'd say, actually, come this way. Yeah, <laughs> and actually exactly. hand, you know, hand hold you through the exactly. ATM process. And so now that they've expanded it to cough, um, which is like flu-like symptoms, yeah. severe cough, I think there's there's one other as well that's yeah. that's acute, you know, it's, it's at the point of service, it's uh -huh. in the emergency room, so you're already in there, but it helps uh -huh. you decide if you need to be in the queue or not. What, what would that tell us? Yeah, no kidding. So, so <laughs> yeah. e even before you come into whatever point of service it is, the urgent care, uh, emergency room, whatever, why why wouldn't you use a nurse advice line to say these are the symptoms that I'm having? Yeah. And if the nurse can't answer like through KP on call, we uh -huh. rather do we have also have physicians that sort of triage beyond things that the nurse can answer uh, questions about their condition. Why why would we not go there and use a healthy health ATM? Or is this just to divert people from using the ED services. Exactly. Okay. Like it, it will, so in one way, it's meant to divert the ED service. It, okay. it is meant to be that. I have, if you jump you know, uh, 10 more years into the future, a yeah. little more proactive care, which will show. But yeah. this is like for the ED. Instead of you know, uh, taking the time and effort and space sure. from the ED, you have people using this. Because I imagine not all hospitals have yeah. Yeah, and it's a lot of money for the patient, depending on if yeah. you have a copay or, or what's going on you know, from a financial perspective. Right. Yeah. And their time from waiting. Exactly. They, they get the answers immediately. And then they can yeah. get a prescription and everything? Yep. So there's a, a physician then that would be lined up to... Yeah, I, I would imagine. Like, so this is yeah. like... Yeah. You know, yeah. Because yeah. Linda brings up a good point with Antala, yeah. you have to be seen by a physician. Yeah. 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 So, uh, screening. Screen. Make sure you don't have anything more serious. Gotcha. Yeah. Now it could be used for a triage. Triage, triage. exactly. Right now, oh, it's it's triage. Triage. So it's almost higher level yeah. triage, right? Yeah. Where you're coming in not just with the like basic symptoms, but it's like getting yeah. to yeah. and a doctor can. No, it's, it's, it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. the, for for UCSF, it's the check in as well. Yeah. So once you you yeah. entered a certain oh, nice. level of information, then um, you don't have to go to the desk, mm -hmm. you know, the, and get checked in. Sure. You're, you're yeah. checked in. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, gonna fast track you through. They know it's yeah. It's yeah, cool. and I used to be a medical assistant on the floor in urgent care. Yeah. Um, this is before you know we went electronic with medical records, and we had our little our little paper for UTIs, and then we had our little <laughs> paper for allergies yeah. And, yeah. and different things, and yeah. it was just a, a little thing that we just went through. Checklist. We just asked the patient this question, this, and it was you know very systematic, yeah. and then they didn't even see that. Then they go have a seat in the waiting room. So this room. is just electronic. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's electronic, electronic version, exactly. version yeah. of that. You hand it to the doctor. The doctor says, okay, it's a UTI, yeah. and then you give them the prescription. Sure. Exactly, get them out. Um, so just jumping more through some more ideas too. Uh, a little bit to yours. Yep, exactly. So this is you know a patient room of the future, right? Where communication is enhanced because you know vitals are visible for the doctor and patient to see. Access to medical records is by touch and by hand. And I'm sure you know the, this future actually may not be that far out, especially with. Is that um, is that what they call the head wall? Is that what they're calling? Um, I actually don't know. I think uh, the, that one over there that is the head wall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's the yeah. patient interactive. You know, yeah. if, if you add like an espresso machine, your, your average length of stay <laughs> will probably increase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so get too comfortable. Yeah, yeah, right. too comfortable here. I mean, the, the environment pieces too, I think uh, there was a few examples that I, that I was trying to pick from, and I picked this one because it's maybe the most futuristic of them all, but mm -hmm. a lot of them are they're trying to be more conducive to whether it's a longer stay for certain types of care. Mm -hmm. Some are more conducive to shorter stays where they actually don't have a bed-like thing in the room anymore, so it's right. like a better use of space. Space. And I imagine a lot of the projects you're doing, and yes, yeah, so I got part of your sketches there, are like in this theme. Like, how yeah, do you redesign this experience? Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and is this stemming from sort of where he, healing and wellness is is best, you know, happening in, in, in these kind of settings, or is that how are they, how are they looking at this? Because yeah. it's not in the old sort of sterile hospital room where you can stay there for a couple yeah. of days to a year and still not get any better. Gotcha. Is this coming out of some studies that are that are showing you know people heal faster in these kind of it's almost two. One is like a holistic environment, so that yeah. people are healing faster in environments that they feel more comfortable in. But the other part is actually more process flow, ah. right? I mean, this uh, this one maybe is more on the end of like, oh, I'm going to stay here for a while. But there are a lot of other examples of smaller waiting rooms, waiting right. rooms where you can move between multiple people. IDEO does a lot of like process oriented things, oh, okay. um, like in this for vein. Uh -huh. Yeah, for throughput, exactly. Because how do you get people in and out? How do you facilitate movement of doctors uh -huh. and nurses? And patients as well too, and how do you get them in and out as quick as possible? Because I mean, every every you know every five minutes counts, or every two minutes counts. Because mm -hmm. if you can shave that off, you can see more people. Um, this one's a really zoomed in close photo of a tattoo of an electronic tattoo. Uh, this one here is the idea is that a patient wherever they come in, they actually have the information of their medical history on mm -hmm. them. Um, and it may not be to the level of a tattoo, but it could be a little chip or a card on their keychain. But they're carrying their medical information with them everywhere because that speeds up a lot of the conversation. Because if a problem today is how do all of our systems talk, what if the patient is the one who goes room to room, hospital to hospital, specialist to specialist with their information? This, of course, is maybe too far in the future, but you know, a little fog, key fog with all that isn't too far to think of. Well, Kaiser has the portable electronic medical record. That's mm -hmm. the USB. So if you're outside the Kaiser area, oh, nice. you can, and it's, and it's encrypted, you can yeah. plug it in anywhere you know, where there's a computer and you'll have all the you know, pertinent information. To, you know, oh, it's really nice. You end up in an emergency room. Retinal scan is nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Retinal scan will pull it. But no, that's, that's pretty neat. I mean, is it meant for, can all patients that access it from Kaiser, or is it meant to be like when you refer out? No, no, anybody can have it anytime. Oh, so wow. if you're if you're going to travel and you're going to go outside the service area, awesome. or you've just lost your insurance and you yeah. want to have a little peace of mind to have a, you know a piece of your medical record with you, What's it's it? not the complete medical record, but it's just those pertinent pieces that you would need should you end up in an emergency department. Yep. So it will have like your latest X-rays, oh, wow. it'll have your latest EKG, it'll yeah. have your latest lab results, all your medications, Allergies. your problem list, that's awesome. allergies. That's, I mean, yeah, that's. That's where, that's where it starts, it really does. It starts from something small like that, then you have other places you see that, and then you have consumers asking for that when they go to. Uh, have you heard of smart cards? Smart cards. Yeah, I think smart cards. I think of, uh, Europe already have a uh -huh. lot of, uh, of this, that they have all the medical records of their smart cards. Yeah. So, and there was a group, I think, testing here. I think UPMC was testing mm -hmm. smart cards. Um, and, and people were thinking, how, how can you have that and scale? And they're thinking driver's license. Yeah, put on your driver's license. Every year, I've driver's license. Everybody has a driver's license, so yeah. just put a microchip in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just got to make sure it's secure enough. Yeah. 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 So we're going to jump a little more in the future. Um, we're going to jump to 2030, because that's where things get a little crazier, because everything I'm going to show you here does not exist today. Uh, so this one here is actually more going on the trend where the United States of America needs more general practitioner, practitioners, right? Mm -hmm. The need is there, but you have more doctors going into more specialized fields. And so what if in the future, 20 years out, actually all the basics, which in this day and age we call the life coach handling your illnesses and flus and basic day-to-day -day things are handled possibly digitally. And so this example here you may have seen before, it's, uh, she's actually walking up to her vanity mirror in her uh, bathroom and it says, Ashley, you have a virus. And because you have this flu, here are the medications you have to take and this is probably where you got it from your uh, phone oh, on the side. Oh, 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 and so, you know, I mean, but, but the, the, the trend on this is that for the day-to-day -day things where you don't want a patient today to come to the hospital, that'll be handled through this life coach who's coaching you through all these different things. And because I think one of the, the emphasis too is like on the pre-diabetes, all the chronic conditions, that takes a coach in a lot of ways to help you through and get you through. And so by having that coach with a specialized doctor system, you get to have more holistic care in a lot of ways. So that's this idea. Um, this one here is actually more when the genome and genetics come to play. When your doctor is talking to you, she can actually recommend the exact treatment and know everything exactly about you. Even if you don't know anything about your parental history, she knows it because of the genomic record, right? And so that's when care really starts to change. Um, and when they can start delivering drugs that are meant just for you. Yeah, no, there's, there's definitely tons of controversy around it. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of the things. Yeah. Um, this is the one that I like because in a lot of ways this is, I'll explain like what we're trying to do right now, but it's like an early warning system. Um, 
could, could you, you could imagine the day when a, you know a person has a lot of sensors already on them, whether it be for heart rate monitors or you know pulse or you know uh, uh, pedometer for walking. In the future, you could know more. Um, like imagine getting a doctor a call from your doctor uh, about a minute before you're about to have a heart attack. You know she goes to you, Mr. Mr. Pinchotson, We notice you're about to have a heart attack. Follow these six steps, and we'll actually prevent it. Just like how we talk about CPR today, it's a way in the future, they're actually finding ways to prevent things before they happen because we know the signals. And you know, for a heart attack, it could be you know, making sure there's proper circulation or moving or not moving. I don't know the right steps, but we'll know 20 years from now. And so if that could happen, that'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so things like that are, are something to think about. Um, which gets into the question is, how do we get there? And I'm actually really glad you brought up that example because it, what it is, it's you, you take us from 2030 and you're actually starting to now. And it is little chips like that. And so I'm going to walk you through a bunch of technology at things that you probably have seen before, but if you haven't seen them, ask me and I can go into more about what they are. And this one, who knows? So it's um, EMRs, right? EMRs are fascinating because now all the different siloed records on paper are now in digital form. You can now carry it with you wherever you are, which is awesome. Um, so that one we can jump over. Um, telemedicine, and for you and for your clinics, I imagine you know, there's more specialists at the main doctor, you know, the hospital centers, but the clinics don't have them, and so telemedicine starts to connect that. We have telemedicine. Yeah. And, and dermatology. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, we have yeah. genetic yeah. counseling. We have oh. telemedicine. Wow. Uh, I actually wonder if dermatology at the ATM would work as well, too, in some ways, right, for some conditions. Um, so telemedicine's there, and so you have companies like Cisco who are really pushing it, and a lot of others as well. This one in Cisco is actually, I think, a more in-depth uh, telemedicine uh, uh, console because it actually has the one where it can take your blood pressure and your heart rate and things like that and you can transfer it over to the doctor and they can see. Yeah, that's great. Um, this one here, has anyone seen what this is? Yeah. The, no. the Fit, the, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. you've heard of the Fitbit, right? Like yeah. the little, uh, okay, yeah. cool. So Fitbit, and so this is actually the jawbone up and you actually wear it in your hand like a bracelet. Uh, the Fitbit, it's, it's, it's something you actually like clip onto your belt or you hmm. put in your pocket and it actually measures the number of steps you make it. Oh, okay. Uh, and so this one here, it's exactly, it's a pedometer. It's a digital pedometer that syncs with your computer and it tells you your activity throughout the day. And it tells you how, far, the new Fitbit that's coming up tells you how far, how high, and how, you know, like if you're going upstairs and if you're not. Yeah. This one here is just, good. Yeah, There's a lot of people that cheat with it. Yeah, they'll just like, <laughs> 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 it's a stop-down medical center and always would win. And he cheated. And, and the cool 